The amount of generated torque by a DC motor depends on the applied current. When the motor is stopped, the generated torque is maximum, just like the motor current. That's the reason why, every time we connect the motor terminals to a power supply, a little spark appears. A servo amplifier not only increases the current to power a motor, but also regulates the current that flows through the motor armature. Thus, the motor and amplifier become a torque supply, which is very useful if we want to control the speed and motor position. However, a servo amplifier is quite expensive. Therefore, in this video, I will show you how to make a DIY servo amplifier to regulate the current of a DC motor. The transfer function of a DC servo motor comprises the dynamics of its electrical circuit and mechanical system. In this model, the motor input is voltage, and its output is angular velocity. However, if we want to control the motor current, we need to rearrange the blocks to put the current as output. Now, the electrical circuit dynamics is in the straightforward path, while the mechanical dynamics are placed in the feedback path. If we connect a shunt resistor in series with the motor to measure its current, and by connecting an oscilloscope to the tachometer, it is possible to realize that the current changes much faster than velocity. Therefore, the block in the feedback path may be considered as a disturbance in a steady state, and it will be ignored for controller turning purposes. Given that the resultant model is a first-order transfer function, it is necessary to implement a proportional integral controller to assure zero error at steady state. The transfer function of the controller has the form a proportional gain Kp multiplied by 1 plus Ti per S over Tis, where Ti is the integral time constant. The closed loop transfer function may be computed as follows. However, the result is quite different from a second order transfer function, since there is zero in the numerator. With the overshoot and response time, it is possible to compute the desired closed loop pulse. So I have to make that the characteristic polynomial of the system adopts these values. But the immediate question here is, how to do that? Well, we have to take a look at the root locus. To draw the root locus of the closed loop transfer function, it is necessary to locate the open loop poles and zeros. If you are unfamiliar with this subject, take a look at Ogata's book, Modern Control Engineering. We have a pole at the origin introduced by the controller, a second pole due to the plant located at minus R over L, and a zero which can be moved with the Ti constant. There are two options. The zero can be located at the right or left side of the second pole. If the zero is placed at the right side, the root locus will be along the horizontal axis, and this implies an overtamped response. On the other hand, if we place the zero at the left side, the root locus takes a longer path. One pole ends in the zero, and the other one goes to minus infinite. This way, by modifying the Kp constant, we can move the closed loop poles along the root locus path. The controller tuning procedure starts by measuring the angles between the open loop poles and zeros and the desired closed loop poles. The sum of these angles must satisfy the angle condition of the root locus drawing rules. The angles theta1, theta2, and phi1 can be readily computed by using the Pythagoras theorem. It is possible with this formula to get the angles theta1 and theta2 for a given closed loop pole and then to obtain a value for phi1. With the phi1 angle, it is possible to clear the ti variable from the equation above. In summary, we have placed the zero in such a way to make the root locus to pass through the desired closed loop poles. The magnitude condition establishes that the norm of the open loop transfer function must be the unity in every point along the root locus. In other words, we have to find out the gain to make the closed loop poles move until the desired position, which must satisfy the design requirements. To do that, we compute first the norm of the controller transfer function evaluated at the point of the interest, which may be written as follows. Next, we apply the same procedure to compute the norm of the plant. 
The last part of the list is to clear the KP variable and that's all. We have found the questions to tune up the controller given a response time and a maximum overshoot. Before I apply in this method, I get a small size DC brush to model. The multimeter reports 33 ohms of resistance, but a more accurate measuring may be accomplished by using the ohms low. I connect the motor to the power supply with the current limited to 1 half amps and I lock the motor shaft with tweezers. Thus, by measuring the voltage reached given that current, it is possible to compute the motor equivalent resistance which, in this case, is around 30.3 ohms. Next, I connect an LC meter to measure the motor coil inductance, which is 17 millihenry approximately. I write a MATLAB script to compute all the required operations to find out the KP and TI gains. Given a response time of 1 millisecond and a maximum overshoot of 1%. I also include the code to plot in the root locus of the system. I fixed the model resistance value and verified that the script works well. By moving the point along the root locus plot, we can observe that the overshoot and damping factor. When we place the pointer in the resultant KP, it's clear that the closed loop poles fulfill the design requirements. But to be sure, I designed a closed loop system to simulate the response to a step of 0.25. The response shape is awesome and the response time is less than 1 millisecond. However, the overshoot is around 3%, which is not bad at all, neither. I want to implement this control loop with a microcontroller. Therefore, I have to check how the system behaves with different sampling times. The system stability depends on this value because varying sampling times produce higher oscillations. Now, it's a hardware time. I use a STM32 microcontroller as the brain of the system. For the power stage, I use the L298, which is not the best option, but it is cheap and widely available around the world. To measure the current flowing through the motor armature, I use a shunt resistor whose value is 100 milliohms. But when I connect the shunt to my power supply with the current limited to 1 amp, the voltage drop is around 200 millivolts. Given that the current is a noisy signal, I have to use an active low pass filter whose cutoff frequency is 1 kHz. By using 100 nanofarad capacitor, the resultant resistor is 15 kOhms. Moreover, the voltage across the shunt is quite low, so it's necessary to amplify the signal with the operation amplifier. The gain of the non-inverting amplifier is 5.6 to obtain 1 volt for each ampere of current, more or less. I designed a schematic diagram with the aid of the Eagle software. First, I include the microcontroller, the H-bridge, the operation amplifier, screw terminals, and all the required passive components. It is crucial to include a bypass capacitor for each IC and a bigger one to decouple in the power supply. I use this diagram as a guide to solder manually the circuit with a prep board. After almost 4 hours of soldering, I finish the board. First, I check the power input terminals for a short circuit, but it is ok. Next, I check the voltage levels. The 12 volts regulator is fine, but the output of the 5 volts regulator is 9 volts. I forget to connect the regulator ground. The next step is to write the code. I include the hardware timer library and the definitions for ADC and PWM pins. Next, I declare a bunch of variables including handlers for the hardware timers. The first timer is used to generate a PWM signal of 36 kHz whose duty cycle branches from 0 to 1000. The second one is set to produce a timer interrupt every 100 microseconds, which is the control loop sampling time. The loop function checks for received bytes from the UART and decodes the desired current set point. The interrupt routine reads the voltage at the ADC input, converts to current, implements the PI controller, and writes the result to the PWM output. Don't forget to limit the error integral to avoiding an overflow in the PWM signal. Finally, I program the microcontroller and power up the system. The first test showed me that the ADC input does not correspond to the real current, so I have to tune a little bit the equation. Now, the current in steady state is correct, but the interesting part lies in the transient response. 
I change the design requirements and compute the control parameters. Next, I download the program to the microcontroller. The system response is overdumped, but here there is no error because the simulation is very similar. So, I change the design requirements one more time. Now, the transient response seems to be underdumped, just like the simulation response. I use the oscilloscope cursor to measure the transient response. The response time is around 1 millisecond, which is good for me, but the overshoot is much higher than that one computed before. Nevertheless, the response shape is quite similar to that one simulated, so I can presume that the identification and tuning processes are correct. Of course, this project is far to be finished. There are more questions to solve here, such as what happens if I set a filter cutoff frequency lower? It is possible to achieve any design requirements, no matter which they are. Why the scope shows different current value than the computer? The response is modified if we simulate the wall motor model with this controller. With these results, I can conclude that the methodology shown here works well despite the suppositions made before. Of course, I have to say that the system response is not the best. However, the proposed procedure may serve as a starting point to achieve a finer tuning by hand. Likewise, the current controller may be used in other appliances like lithium battery chargers or LED power supplies. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful. Keep in touch because in following videos I will show you how to control speed and more position. Thank you for watching.